This is the Outstanding Dylan Mesh, and you are listening to, watching, experiencing, taking in the Three Count Podcast. Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want to ride with me? I'm in the club, baby, grind on me. Do you want to get live with me? Do you want to get live with me? Do you really want to ride with me? Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Winch Ring, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And by season four and our 300th episode and our new location and, you know, all the other stuff that's happening around here, I would just hope you say it with me. I am your Sherpa. Because just like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, it's never about me because you need to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficient than you can. That's why it's never about me. Like I said, it's about who's entering. So who's entering the ring today? You can find this man at AAW, Outbreak, MPFW. You can find this man at Smashmaster, High Tension, MAWA. He is incredible. He is talented. He is multifaceted. And he is a man who wears all black because guess what? He's like the Death Rider, only without the Rider part. He just comes with death. He is the man, the myth, the legend. Give it up for my boy, Dylan Mesh. <laughs> what's going on, man? Yo, what's up, bro? Like, it has been such a long time since you and I got to sit back and, like, just chat it up. Yeah, like, what? It's going on two years, right? Yeah, so we, like, ran into each other at Outbreak, and we had this, like, fun-ass four-way and then, like, I was like, oh, I'll see Dylan again some other time. Like, we'll catch up and talk and stuff like that. And just never cross paths again. No. Like, the, and what are the chances? Because it's like you will run into every wrestler that you see at some random show 400 times after that. You know, you never have to. If you have something you got to give them, something you got to tell them to their face, you never worry about it because you see them when you least expect it. And then this happens, you know, and now you're in New England. So <laughs> it's good. But I know it's going to happen. Like. We will run into each other at the most random place, but for right now, this is it. This is what we got going on. Well, it's like I was looking around, just like seeing other promotions and stuff like that that you've been attached to, and and promotions I've been attached to up here in in the New England area, and then even like back with like the the DMV and Pennsylvania area, and then like seeing like Mike Skyros, right, who is you know pro wrestling grinds heavyweight champion, uh, seeing him like at high tension, and I was like, oh. Oh shit, like, bro, I'm about to start making these drives back down to Jersey and into Pennsylvania because that's where I want to be now. <laughs> yeah, my Skyros man, he's awesome and he's he's really getting out there and he just he kicks all kinds of ass. So, no, it's really cool just seeing him, you know, all over the place. Um, he's one I have. Have you wrestled him yet? No, 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 no. So, like, I've been up here. Uh, so, I mean, we're recording this on September 5th, just to date the episode, right, mm -hmm. when you guys get to see this. So, I've been here for about, uh, I think, June is when I got up here. Like, July. Maybe it was July 1st I got up here. So, it's been a couple of months. I'm still trying to get my feet underneath me and just kind of, like, explore and stuff like that and just, like, hit up different shows and just try to get out as much as possible. But it is uh, – it's a daunting task when you move and you uproot everything and then oh, you're trying yeah. to reroot everything back down. <laughs> yeah. No, you got time. You got time. You know, do I though? Time. Like tomorrow I'm turning 38. <laughs> like I'm turning 38 tomorrow. <laughs> you don't look it. I'm hundred yeah. percent serious. You do not look it. Yeah, I appreciate it, but it's like, oh no, like this. And I remember like when I first got into this business, right? I was like, yeah, I probably, you know, I came in at like 34, 35, and I was yeah. uh, 33, 34, and I was like, I probably got like a solid 10 years, and like going into my, going into 38, I'm like, you know what, like, maybe I do have a good 15 years in me, because like, I don't take any like ridiculous bumps, and I don't do like, and I, I love the art form, right, I just want to get that out there, mm -hmm. but I don't do death matches, right, because it's just not my thing, and Plus, the fact that I want to be more marketed towards kids and stuff like that. Not that no one else is a market towards kids. It's just I just want to keep myself in that kind of realm. Yeah. It's like, it just doesn't make sense for me to kind of be in that world. But I don't take ridiculous, like, shots, right? Like, I just it's not a thing that we get into yet. But maybe when I'm, like, towards the end of my career, I'm like, yeah, it's time to hang it up. Maybe I'll do a death match or two. I don't know. I'm not really, like, sold on the idea yet. But we'll see what happens at, like... 48 49 or 50 <laughs> yeah you know what there's a time and a place for everything but i look at a guy like like kenny omega that said like the end is definitely within sight for him and then in this year alone he's taken that 
Tiger Driver ninety three just getting dropped straight on his dome. Bruh. And then he took and then he took like took that backdrop driver the other night. It just gets lands right on his dome. So like, you know, sometimes I think when when you see the end of the tunnel <laughs> getting closer and closer, you kind of reconsider things. And you'll be like, yeah, I'm cool with that. But it is weird though because you look at someone like. Like Kenny, and he does like all these crazy these bumps and stuff like that. Like he takes these wild drivers, right? And then you look at someone like AJ Styles, right? And AJ's been doing it for a long time, and AJ's had some crazy, crazy bumps. But when you look at him, like he's you know in his late forties, and he's like mm-hmm. just killing it still, right? Rey Mysterio, another perfect example, right? I know the dude's had like three ACL surgeries. <laughs> if you understand that point, right? And he is a high flyer, right? But he's also when was the last time that you saw like Rey Mysterio do something like insane, right? And I'm not even talking about like in in like the wrestling, in in in, in wrestling. Like when did you? When's the last time you seen him do like a crazy move, right? Like the craziest thing I can really think of that I've seen Rey Mysterio take, right, was when he um got strapped to the strap the 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 board, and yeah. then Big Show slammed him into the into the button and then dropped him, and he yeah. just gave himself a concussion. Like I don't know that's face. oh my god, yeah, I'll never forget. But I think that's like the wildest thing. But you know, mm-hmm. Ray also complains that his knees are starting to go now because, like, you know, it gets hard to walk around and stuff. But he's still moving, like he's in his thirties, and it's, it's it's incredible to see. But he's not doing anything rough. Look at Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho really not doing anything crazy either. It's you see these guys who have these like long careers and they're just like, they're not taking anything wild. They're just, just being smooth with their moves. Yeah. Uh, Ray in particular, I think the craziest thing that he does is like every once in a while, he'll like take something, he'll get like thrown in the barricade in some crazy way, or he'll like get like thrown on the floor. Yeah. And that's about it. Um, Styles is just about the same way. Jericho, Jericho did that match with, Eddie Kingston, where again he just took like a lot of like high angle like slams and stuff like that, but I think I think about that a lot, and I think about how like all those guys that like got really high like really high up to the top in the industry, they talk about how like you know the things that you should be focusing on and stuff like that, but like all of them like if you look early in their careers, they didn't do that <laughs> like they were doing crazy stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think of I think of like Kevin Owens, I'm like. You were like doing four fifties and like, you know, just like taking the, uh, these absolutely insane bumps, and then you calm down. But then it's like it's like, is the answer to like go balls to the wall to get eyes on you, and then make that adjustment like once people are paying attention. Well, yeah, know. but really, at one point, like Kevin Steen was doing what was he called it, the the Steenerator or something like that. It was like oh, the Steenalizer. The Steenalizer. Oh, yeah. oh, you couldn't pay me enough. Yo, oh. and he is wrecking people through like that second turnbuckle, like, and you're like, bruh, and and people are like willing to take that too, right? And then like, then Kevin Steen when he came to, you know, when he came, obviously became Kevin Owens and he came to WWE, he was like, uh, I'm I'm retiring that move. Yeah, no shit, <laughs> like, you're yeah. ending careers with that. You know, what I mean, it's it's crazy to think about. It's like, you know, but you look at like even even Kevin Owens, right? Like Kevin Owens' move set, like. It's changed, right? Even in someone like Ricochet, right? Ricochet, who's like known for doing these big high flying acts and stuff like that. Remember, like for a while, like he was hitting the six thirty like every night, right? Oh. And then he asked Jericho, like, "Hey, can I use the Ricochet? Can I use you know the Code Breaker?" And he's like, "Yeah, just make it your own." So he does it with the one knee. But it's like Ricochet, even Ricochet, like he adjusted his whole move set because he understands like you're bumping like every night. And if you think about it, like even if you take one bump a night, right? It's and every show that you're working, you're talking like two, three, two hundred and thirty, two hundred forty bumps mm-hmm. every every year, and that's a lot to take. Like your average worker is probably taking maybe if your average worker is is, is in there, right? You're probably talking something like between seventy to eighty, depending on the worker, right? Oh, mm-hmm. maybe um a uh, a show, right? Like a weekend, right? Or, uh, of the year. That's what I meant the year but otherwise like bro these guys are like doing all sorts of crazy stuff and i'm like this is insane yeah and especially i mean those are guys that it, and it's so hard to kind of gauge what kind of an effect that that's having like on them in general because those are guys with a lot of mileage on them in ge- like you know when they got there 
and they got a lot of mileage on them now. And everybody's genetics are different because sometimes you had an example like what, like Brody Lee, like Brody Lee, like tore his ACL one time, and he was like, yeah, it was nobody's fault. Like it's, I just have bad genetics, you know. So you have stuff like that, and again, just the 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 desire to stand out and do more, which you know causes you to just wear down your body even more. Um, a lot of people keep pointing to these people that have like next to no experience in NXT and AEW that like have to like take months off and like get surgery and stuff like that. And that you veterans like, no, there, there's no way that should be happening. Like, that's not how this works. Like, in no world was it ever like that. So it's just it's a it's a crazy environment that we're we're in right now. I think the only great saving grace is that um and like with your background in like fitness and all this, you would know this better than anyone. Um like recovery you know and wellness has just come like leaps and bounds over the years yeah where even if you are super banged up like that there's a lot that you can do almost like on your own really like that you can just get back up almost to 100 percent in a short amount of time well it's crazy because like let's let's use the performance center for you know for fun right the performance center is such an interesting place because like these guys get they get brought in right and they get told hey we're going to put you through all these drills right and it's these high intense drills right and there's no real recovery it's like hey you're either going to learn get better and improve in six months or we're going to cut you right and these they tell these guys like hey we're going to give you we're going to give you a two-year contract but if you're not improving in six months we're going to cut you and so you have all this pressure to one bump never recover Mm -hmm. always like keep moving right then you're asked to go lift right so some of these guys are in a gym like six seven days a week right six yeah. or seven days a week and then not only that you're training probably four hours of that five hours of that you're going to classes you're learning you're still studying right but there's not a, a specific time frame of hey for these these first four weeks right we're going to work on strength and conditioning right because we need to get these bodies moving and conditioned, right? Then we're going to work on, we're going to go through another cycle where it's just a recovery week, recovery two, three weeks. And then we want to get into like a power cycle. And then we want to get, get you back into that recovery so we can get you back into strength and conditioning and rotate these like programs so that these guys can get better, right? Because if you look at someone like Ava Reigns, right? Simone Johnson, for those who are wondering who we're talking about, right? The Rock's yeah. daughter. Uh, she had three ACL surgeries, and she's like 24, 25. Like, bruh, oh what? Like, God. why is she tearing her stuff up? Like, yes, wrestling is 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 a is a violent but like protected air, like show, sport, performance, whatever you want to call it, right? But it's like there's no reason why someone like that is tearing their ACL three years, you know, almost four years in a row, and then finally she makes her debut. And mind you, everybody's like, she's so mid. She's a beginner. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yo, she's torn her shit up. Like, let her have some time, re recover, learn on the fly because she's going to have to. But I don't know. It's who am I? I'm just, you know, just a, a regular dude. I, I know nothing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very rough environment right now to try to get good <laughs> at wrestling, you know, because there are so many platforms where it's a double-edged sword you know there's so many platforms where people can be put in front of really really big audiences nxt being one of them but those are also platforms where you can basically fail in front of the world and sometimes it's almost impossible to shake that like bad first impression um the indies are uh, very uh, not all that different honestly like with these streaming platforms and stuff like that like if you're like a year or two in and you just have like a complete like dog shit match and it's like in front of 30 people, that's not a big deal. But I mean, if they, if they're like streaming it to an audience and it's on like IWTV or something like that, and you've got like a couple hundred people watching and it's those same couple hundred people that are going to keep watching you because they're clearly indie wrestling fans. Well then like, what are they going to think? Like the next time you come through the curtain, even if you're significantly better, uh, it's just, it's a very, strange dilemma that we we kind of have to uh you know navigate around in our careers right now yeah and, and it's, it's interesting because you bring up iwtv right and i know normally this is like a this is like supposed to be like an interview show i know guys but this is legitimately like a fun conversation that we are going to have and, and don't worry we're going to learn more about mr mesh himself too but iwtv is such an interesting platform because like 
like everybody has access to it, but like nobody mm-hmm. has access to it. If that makes sense. <laughs> like you obviously you pay to watch indie wrestling, and then there's like significant fans. Those are like the hardcore wrestling fans that are gonna pay attention. And then even inside that, you have the more hardcore fans that know like everything from everybody, right? So whether it's the mass wrestler or you have you know Invictus or the wrestling open or I forget uh I think uh Pro Wrestling Grind is on there as well. You mm-hmm. see like a lot of different shows and then everything from the West Coast. And I, I'm sorry, guys. I there's not a I've only had a couple people from the West Coast on the show, so I don't really know what kind of shows are coming up on there. But then like you talk about t- like cable TV, like Memphis, right? Uh, Memphis Pro Wrestling has like their own network. OVW, you know, you mm-hmm. can find them. It is just crazy to see all these other shows that are like going on and like building and stuff like that. And you're right, like there's some people who are very forgiving especially like hardcore fans are very forgiving because when they see like there's someone that's been wrestling for like one or two years like all right they're learning okay we Mm -hmm. could kind of see the improvement coming in but god forbid you're a dude that's like kind of send me like a name right and then you come in with like eight years of experience and you just shit the bed the first (laughs) your first wrestling match man that fan those fans do not let you forget it is so crazy to think that like hey yo man like He's up, man. All right. Does everybody yeah. have a bad performance in a while. <laughs> but it happens at your job too. You know, yeah. it just happens to be there's not hundreds of people watching. So, like, yeah, just calm down a little bit. But it's just, yeah, it, it there are so many more opportunities to fail like that as opposed to like, I don't know. Yeah, I had the same chance to do that. Like when somebody debuted on TV back in the day, like poor Kazarni just had such a bad first match, and now that's kind of his legacy, Sin Bodhi rules. You watch him wrestle in any other instance, you will be impressed. Uh, not everyone saw that. <laughs> Some people only saw that first match, and and now it is what it is. Sin Bodhi's the man. I've been trying to get him on the show for a long time, man. <laughs> like, I'm so I keep, rad. Just keep knocking on the door. Eventually, yeah. he's going to answer. <laughs> so, hey, man, let me dive into this, right? So, let me know, who is Dylan Mesh? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, do I even know? Um, <sighs> Dylan Dylan Mesh is a dude that he's convinced he's a good person, and he's convinced that he's a better person than most. But he's not too good at convincing others. Um, you know, it's kind of like holding. It, it's almost like the world has a microscope <laughs> that they can see straight through him. You know, but he doesn't really realize that. Um, so he tries to overcompensate in a lot of ways, and it just kind of keeps making things worse. Um, what with the wanton violence and all that. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's led to some interesting situations. Let's just say, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's getting around. <laughs> He's getting around, so somebody's interested. But <laughs> oh goodness. You do have like this interesting. I I love your character because I remember like the first time when we like met up right at uh outbreak, uh, there was like this moment that we had where like we had both thrown out our opponents right, <laughs> and I was just sitting there looking at you and you're like, hey, where's that? I was just like, you just had to see their way out. Like, oh, he just left. He's fine. We're here, and we just had like this awesome interaction where you kind of like, where's what's going on here? And then I'm just like. Yeah. Like Man, a, that was so fun, was it not? Like that was yes. so fun, and I kind of wish I wish I could have I wish I could have it to do over again, only because so that was September of 2021, and I had been back in wrestling for I think I I did my first show back like a week or two before that, mm. so like like I had taken like I would not get in a ring, I came near nobody like through all of COVID. And when things started to kind of loosen up and people started to get vaccinated, I got back into training. I trained my ass off all through the summer, like right from the beginning of June. And I got back in the ring. So like as far as like my skill level, I think I was just about like where I was before or just about to get there. Um, and like psychology wise, I mean, I was as good as I ever was. But like that's not saying much, you know, like so I think it, like if we got another crack at it, like I know we could kill it. But like when you matches are all about moments right and like the ones that you like even in your mind when you run them back like you remember like the moments that mean the most to you i remember that too that beginning <laughs> where i put my tie on the thing and when i turned around it was just you sitting cr- you know uh crisscross applesauce <laughs> yeah. on the mat 
you know, because that was so that was so much fun. And we got to use our characters in a way that actually meant something. So, I think, sorry, I mean, I think that's no, the most I, important part is that we we so even like and don't worry, you guys can look on, on my YouTube page. It's there. Uh, mm. But our match was like it was like five minutes long. Right. It was a fatal four way. But you and I like we really focused like on the character side of things like mm -hmm. the playfulness of our characters because we wanted that idea that like we're both like serious killers if you push too hard but we are also very playful like if we want to like at the beginning because like you hit this move on Chaz that was just I was like oh that was a thing of beauty <laughs> yeah I think that might have been the I do this thing I have a move that's literally just like it's like Kevin Nash said, like, if you just try to pop the boys, like, yeah, those are usually the most effective things. So, like, I do a backbreaker and I yell lumbago before it because, like, that was literally just an inside joke with, like, Ryan Mooney and a handful of other dudes from the dojo. And, like, it just became part of, like, it just my thing. So, I think that's what I hit on him. I'm pretty sure I just, like, fucking slaughtered his spine, like, with a backbreaker. <laughs> but what I remember is, and I think this was, like, right after, like, the right after i turned around i saw you sitting there i think we ended that with you getting up on me and i just remember you threw like this monster of lariat and that's my man that's my jam like i love i think maybe the the most important thing that came out of COVID shutting everything down for me was i spent like the entire time just watching like 90s all japan and i was like oh this is this is the best this is the best thing i've ever seen so like that that king's road style just like i came to like revere it so like I didn't know, like, I didn't know you were about that life. I know you said that you, you were going to hit me with it. I knew it was coming. I was like, oh, I didn't know it's like that. Because <laughs> my soul, my soul came out my body for a second. I was like, that was rad. And I remember, like, even the guys put it over, like, once we were done, they were like, yo, you throw a hell of a lariat. So, yeah, man, like, it, it's one thing to have the character, but it's another thing to, like, then back it up, like, you know, when it's time to throw down. You know, what's so funny is that, like, if you watch that lariat compared to the ones I've thrown recently, you'd been like, "What happened?" <laughs> because, <laughs> like, like I, it was so weird. Because, like, I loved following through with my lariats, but mm -hmm. it happened in a training, right? Um, we were practicing throwing lariats, right? And I was throwing them, and I hit somebody, and I don't remember what happened, but I felt like this sudden sting, like from like the middle of my forearm all the way through to my shoulder, Ooh. and like. It wasn't painful, like, and I still, like, I still throw Larry's the same way, but mm -hmm. I understand that, like, once I follow through, it almost feels like, you know, like, pitchers, when they throw so much, like, all oh, of a sudden, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, there's, like, this weird, so, like, there's this weird, this weird, like, tingling that hits, so Ooh. now when I hit, like, I'll hit, but then I won't follow through all the way, mm -hmm. because I'm like, yo, yeah, something happened, and uh, I, I remember, and I think what it was is when one of the new kids at my training went like this as I followed through and like, yeah, just fucked my shoulder all up. So I'm like, now like, that's like the, <laughs> it's funny cause you mentioned that. And then like one of the biggest, like, and I'm sorry guys, I, I know, but one of the biggest notes that I get constantly is like, yo, follow through with your lariats or with your clotheslines. I'm like, I would, but <laughs> uh, the last time I did, hurts. I got hurt. So I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of timid and feel following through with that. <laughs> the mental, the, and those mental blocks are just like, sometimes they are so killer for people, you know, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Because especially people that end up messing up their knees, you know, they're like, sometimes they're afraid to straight up, like leave their feet yeah. ever again for any reason. And I get it. You know, it's like, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't you don't want to go through what you did before but and, and it's probably going to happen to me someday you know it's just a matter of time because wrestling but and i guess if, it scares me i guess if i'm throwing like one or two larry i guess i should just bring it back and just murder people with my lariat because at the end of the day like it's one or two maybe per show i'm not throwing like eight or nine in a row mm -hmm. to kids like I, but i was like damn bro because I remember hitting Seymour with that too. Mm -hmm. And Seymour, like, I feel like, hey, if you're watching this, like, I'm going to be honest. I swear to God, I thought I took his head off. Because he's not, he wasn't a big lad. So, <laughs> you know, you throw that at the same, at the same power. That's, oh, geez. I remember him telling me too in the back. He was like, I love when I get hit and I just like, 
it, it's like I'm standing and then I'm flat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. But yeah, it's if if I if if somehow the everything lined up where we could do that match again, like I know we could make it like, oh yeah, ten times better. I would definitely love to run it back, especially now because when you think about like you put in a lot of reps and stuff like that and you keep getting back into it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you're developing your character even more. Right. And now your character becomes more well-rounded. You're more comfortable in your skin. Mm-hmm. You're able to go out there and just like ready to slay it down. And I, I definitely think, especially because like there's more stuff that I've added to like the arsenal of red dog. Yeah. And then also just like the fun side of things where it's like, Hey man, like there's still more shit talking going on. Like, behind uh-huh. the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no and those are always exciting that's why like like when you like rematches i really like you get, you really value those on the indies right because like you know it, it, it's a rare instance where you get to like you almost a, a beat for beat comparison of what you did before um and i know there's been instances where especially in those early days of the character where uh you know i i had it down as good as well as i could but there's all these improvements and all these adjustments that you've made along the way. Uh, like my, Ryan Mooney's a good example. I wrestled him in Quebec in, I think it was May of last year. And we were both just like kind of in like an early stage of developing both of our characters. And then we wrestled again only like a couple weeks ago. That's on the Worldwide Dojo's YouTube page. And we had another singles match. And that felt, it's like you could... I feel like the difference feels like night and day to me because I'm the one who lived it. I don't know if it would be for other people, but you know, it's stuff like that, man. It's just I I value those chances to challenge myself, you know. Yeah, no, I definitely understand where you're coming from because, like, you know, Chaz and I wrestle. So Chaz and I met in the dark arts world. Uh, uh, anybody who pays attention knows exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, we then we had that fatal four way right uh, outbreak, right? And then and because Chaz and I are sorry spoiler we're friends okay we <laughs> last year last year we worked at uh another show and it was him and i and like we because we've worked around each other so much and mm-hmm. been around each other we kind of know like every we know each other so well we barely talked and we just slayed it we had mm-hmm. so much fun and like the crowd was into it and mind you there was probably like nah, I want to say like there was like 40 50 people watching our match right but everybody was getting into it everybody was loving it everybody people didn't know who to cheer for we didn't really set a heel heel face dynamic and i know a lot of people were like yo set a heel face up like no this is an outdoor show where you guys legitimately told us like they don't know wrestling so just go out there and have <laughs> fun and we're like cool that's what we're gonna do and that's what we did and guess mm-hmm. what everybody was like yo that was a, such a great fucking match man i was like Thanks, bro. We appreciate that. <laughs> well, those non those those crowds where people don't know anything about wrestling are, man, they're sometimes the best because you there's such a good barometer for like if something works or not. You know, um, maybe the it's gonna be hard for me to ever top this show in my life. But back in June, um, I got to be part of a wrestling show that was it like part of but like kind of like intermittent with a skate a women's skate competition at fdr park in philadelphia so like there was a ring that was just plopped right in the middle of the skate park and there were like punk bands and like the skate competition it was the coolest thing ever and then like everybody just congregated like around this ring and then we had a wrestling show they didn't know about wrestling at all they didn't care we went out there and did our things and they loved they loved absolutely everything that we did like it was incredible to the point where going to going to um so my trainer cheeseburger was in the main event that man grabbed the microphone and he he said he took responsibility for i-95 collapsing if you remember when that happened yeah <laughs> took responsibility for i-95 collapsing said that tony hawk's pro skater 2 is the worst video game he's ever played <laughs> and somebody threw a full beer at him and hit him in the shoulder if that would have hit him in the head he would have been knocked out i have never seen <laughs> I have never seen people throw things in the ring, like outside, like in my, in person. We've all watched the old nitros where people pelt the NWO with, with garbage and stuff. I've never seen it in person. The first person to do it was cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> like the most chill, like 
bit like the biggest underdog it could ever be and then he pissed off this crowd of skaters and uh, they were ready to riot like th- those kinds of crowds are just like they're, they're the absolute best i would love to like just find ways to just like piss people off but like bro i'm gonna be honest with you tony hawk pro skater sucked and i hate escape three i'm gonna be honest all these games that were all i i'm gonna be like honestly man dave mira bmx that's what did it for me tony hawk i don't even think about it <laughs> like, uh know? watch the watch the viewership just like yeah because he said something that controversial i just would love to, hey you know what that means that means that they started watching first and i appreciate you guys <laughs> you know? thank you thank you for watching um yo so we were talking about characters and stuff like that and and, and developing yeah. right so i'm just kind of curious what kind of sources did you pull from the outside to like help continue to grow the the dylan mesh character well it started with again having a lot of time just to sit around and think about stuff during COVID, which is just so unique to me. Right. And, uh, I just, everything seems so meaningless at that time. It's like, what does any of this matter? Anything in our lives? I was like, and and I just remember going, like, I would just run through my head, like all the things that we were told we're supposed to do in wrestling. And like, I remember one of them just being like, you got to have good gear. You got to have professional looking gear. It's got to fit well. And I was just like, what if I didn't like, what if just no, you know, what if just piss off and I don't feel like it anymore? And I I, uh, I came in one day to training and I was wearing dress clothes like a year before that. And Berger was like, you should wrestle in that. And that just kind of like planted a seed in my head. So I was like, okay, how do I make that work now? So like, how do I transition? Because I was calling myself the Pennsylvania Warlock before that. And I would just wear like, I just, I basically just looked like a Nazgul from uh, Lord of the Rings. And so I was like, how can I pivot that? over to something new that I could have some more fun with. So I was like, well, what if, what if he tried to convince everybody that like, he's not an evil dirt bag anymore, but like, he was really bad at that. You know, like he was just as evil as ever. <laughs> like he just, he was like really like just shitty at, at lying to people about it. So that's where the dress clothes came from. And then the way that I carry myself, um, a lot of it is inspired by like more modern depictions of Satan um like like 18 like like 19th century onward where like he's always like a like a well-dressed individual you know just like overly just friendly but yeah like you feel something you feel that something is off but like he looks nice um i took a lot of inspiration from the agents um from the matrix mm. um because they are also just like they look normal but they're not and then when they start moving they certainly don't you know that facade just falls away completely um those were the those were the biggest inspirations now preacher from uh who's just been around forever and it's just like an absolute wrestling genius he trains uh students at the worldwide dojo along with cheeseburger and the one day i was explaining this to him and he goes to me he just listens to the whole thing and he just goes you're homelander i was like what he's like you're homelander i was like oh and so like i need to like go and like they get into like the boys um because that may unfurl even more but that's where we're at right now i love so i love the comparison to see i love the comparison to the boys right because like homelander is that dude that's like you know he he's he just he's justified in everything that he's doing in his mind <laughs> even if it's not the right thing that he's doing like i think it like the was it season four for those who first of all spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen this it's um, fine. but in the in the last season right when he's up there and he's like talking you don't really want to jump no no not at all no we just just stop, come down from there you'll be okay and he turns and he sees that uh old girl died and he turns back around. He's like, you know what? You know what? Jump. No, I wasn't asking. <laughs> and then she jumps. And I was like, oh, shit. And like he he should have saved her, right? But he was kind of like, he was mad. He was a person, right? And he's just, and I'm like, you know, I, I don't fault him. But I also fault him because he should have not pushed, like, Pushed her to the point where she was gonna jump anyway. I was like, God dang, man. He was just like, nah, bro, I don't give a shit about this person. But yeah. it's interesting to see that he's 
kind of a giant douche in season one and two and it doesn't change much from there so i kind of like that you're kind of going towards that character of like that hey i'm justified in what i'm doing but i'm not a bad guy <laughs> yeah because it's like I, I i try to stay cognizant of like uh you know like the things that people uh, are attuned to or like reacting to nowadays you know I try to try to stay up on the times and like there's just there's so much hypocrisy that goes on that people like try to like point out on the internet and it never does anything. And I always like, I find that to be so fascinating and it's frustrating for me too. Like it happened like in politics, it happens all the time. Um, there, are, there are celebrities who will like just go on, you know, just like spit out their opinions. And then there are people who will like, they'll quote tweet it, you know, cause Twitter's just so big. I, I'm dead naming Twitter, but um, whatever he's calling it, whatever letter he's calling it nowadays. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, X <laughs> gonna give it to you. And um, but people would quote to it, and they would just like, just fact check the hell out of it, you know, just like prove this person wrong. It doesn't change anything, you know. Like it, it could get, it could get retweeted a hundred thousand times, that it doesn't change anything with that particular individual. So um, I, I, I try to channel that, like, just like do these horrible things, and then have like a good reason for it in my head. But like. You can point out the flaws in that all that you want. And people have, people have plenty of times, but like I, I do promos all the time. I just fight back, you know, I just push back at it. And then I just give more reasons why they're wrong and I'm right. And it just kind of digs the hole for me in a narrative sense, but in my head, everything is fine. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. I love that. I love that side of the character, like building it up. This is, these are the things that like I thoroughly enjoy, right? Like, it was something I learned recently was that like you have to have your your 11 second your 11 second intro right which mm -hmm. is massive right so you want those characters those people to know exactly who you are what you talk about where you're at right away and then mm -hmm. after that you want to have like your obviously your layers right so like something new that's kind of like attached to Red Dog is that uh, Red Dog is now let it be known that he has a family mm -hmm. and that Crayolas and PLEAs do not pay for themselves. And so he mm. needs to get this money half up front and half when the job's completed oh. so that he can pay for that. And uh, it's been quite hilarious to like include like new aspects of the character because it's like now we're digging deeper into the layers of like where everything like everybody people knew that Red Dog, uh, like Red Dog had a dog named Duke, right? Who passed away. And he that's why he's got a paw print of him on his t shirts now. Mm -hmm. And then so there's like all sorts of stuff. Red Dog has his thoughts of the day where he just randomly <laughs> talks about a disturbing fact. Which I sometimes watch and then I put my phone down and I look at the horizon and I'm like, why is life like this? <laughs> you know? So you're doing great with those. I, you know what's great is that uh, the guy who inspired that, right? I reached out to him on – so he had like a lot of followers on TikTok. And I was like, there's no way he's going to see this message. So I went to his Instagram page where there was like quite a thousand less people, right? Nice. And I just reached out and I was like, hey, man, can I bring on my podcast? And he was like, yeah, no doubt. So we brought him on the show so that I could just tell him like, yo, thank you for all that you do because I definitely steal like a lot of his content and just like credit him with it. But then like yeah. go back. And so it's been quite hilarious to see him. But he does the voice of Skeletor uh, for the Disturbing Facts. And oh. I was like, yeah, that's what got my attention. Because remember, like, I love <laughs> the Skeletor that's voice, like his impersonation yeah. of it. So I'm like, bro, like, oh, there's no doubt I'm going to do this. And so now, like, Red Dog's thoughts of the day have been, like, built up. And, like, people are looking like, why why does Red Dog do the things he does? And then they're like, oh, that's right, because he's Red Dog and he just he just does these things. Yeah, or, like, uh, through his head. <laughs> or how recently he just let it be known that his, like, computer is where he gets all of his emails and so like he he hopes that every email that he gets is from a female and then it's not <laughs> like there's just i just think about different things and things that inspire me so like strong i don't know if you remember do you remember homestar runner do you remember i sure do so strong bads emails like that's where like i borrow so much from like past culture stuff i'm like bro this gotcha. is so much fun to revive <laughs> No, and you know, it, it seemed like a lot of fun even like two years ago. So the <laughs> idea that you've built on it is just so <laughs> that's like exciting for me just to hear. Um, my hope would be like, uh, do you have a lot of places where you're able to like 
like convey that like story wise like in from like promotions that like let you run with that yeah so it's been funny so like uh a few weeks ago i debuted in maine right um at supernova wrestling and the guy that i was working with he's this guy named big cat right and uh nice dude by the way and and so behind the scenes in in the ring not so much anyway gotcha. but uh <laughs> like at one point like i tripped him like i jumped in front of him he tripped he fell over the top of me i jumped on top of him and i was like down kitty down <laughs> it's like if i had a squirt bottle right now i just do damn <laughs> then he's like he's like six four like almost 320 pounds he just stands up and i'm just like stuck to him <laughs> And then he throws me off, right? And I just go flying in the air and I land in the superhero pose. And I was like, yeah. And I look, I remember looking at a kid and was like, it's pretty cool, right? And like I stand up, I was like, yeah, we got skills, turn around, boom, ate a lariat. <laughs> yeah, you were always really good with stuff like that. And I don't know. You probably have you ever gotten shit for the way that for any of that? Because like I could see, yeah, I could see people being like, oh, this doesn't, you know. Yeah, go with this or that, but like I, I don't want to put name. I got kicked. I, I, I took a kick in the back, and uh, like the thing about it is that like it, it, it it's weird because like everybody talks about that everybody registers pain differently, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, and my character does it kind of in a comedic fashion. So like I got kicked, and I was like, oh, right in the spine, and like they didn't like that I uh, I did it that way. And they're like, why does your character? I was like, because that's how he registers pain. Like he registers pain through humor because I can't tell like in full story. Cause like this is the one thing you can't do, right? Is when you have a character and you build up so many layers, you can't obviously go through every single layer, right? Yeah. Like my character has like a lot of trauma and he uses humor to hide that trauma. And you can't like, you can't convey that in, in like a five minute match. Like mm -hmm. it's going to take, time like you want to get brought back more and more so that you can unveil all these like layers of things that happen mm -hmm. let them cut promos right like those that would yeah. also make sense but yeah in this instance i did do that and then like they didn't like that and they're like don't do that again i was like oh. but if your crowd was here your crowd would have popped and laughed her ass off at it because it's that fun and i'm thinking when i'm and when you're putting matches together, like I'm thinking about like how the crowd may react to it. And mm -hmm. I'm doing both sides of it. Either they're, they're into it or they're not. Right. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I want to be as loud as possible so that everybody can hear it. Right. And that's what I was thinking about. And so when I got, when I got told that note, I was like, all right, then I did it again at another show and mm -hmm. the crowd blew up with it. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I feel like when, you dial in on what it is that you do and you like it. And if you, especially if you have like a proven track record with it, it's fine. If not everybody like gets it, you know, or I, I feel like sometimes people feel the pressure to get on like every show that they can, like on the Indies, but it's like, there are promotions out there to their, you know, more power to them. There are promotions out there that like, have a vision and they know what they want. They know what kind of matches and what kind of wrestlers they want. If you don't fit that mold, it doesn't mean like you're not good enough, you know. It just means that like you know, there's there somebody out there who like digs what you do. It's just a matter of finding them and working with them, you know, and then making money. Um, but you know, it, it, that doesn't mean that like, it, of course, like not everybody's gonna be down with like what you do. But uh, clearly, there are people who do enjoy it, and I'm sure that we could think of like five promotions off the top of our heads that would like, you know, really run with something like that. Yeah. And, and and it all goes back to, you know, you got to plug and play and figure mm -hmm. out, learn, build relationships. And then the other part, too, is that like and I and I've told myself this numerous times. Right. Like just because I don't belong. Just, if I'm not there now, don't worry. I'm going to be there. Like I, I just know like it's, it's so weird. Like I got in this mindset of saying, even though it's not my time right now, I, my time will be there. I will get there and I will do what I want and I will mm -hmm. get to where I'm going to get to because that's what people want, right? Like they want these characters that they can connect with, right? Look at look at someone like Orange Cassidy, right? Orange Cassidy is not for everybody. No. Nah. But everybody connects to Orange Cassidy. Like whether you love him or hate him, right? You could be someone like like John Moxley, right? Cut that beautiful promo about him. Like, hey, I, he's looking awfully real to me, right? And then, like, he was like, I'm not going to play around. I'm going to take him very seriously. And then you got – and and then on the other side of him, you got someone like 
Cornette, right? Who calls him pockets, right? Who hates his style. But regardless, whether you hate someone or you love someone, like you're connecting with that person. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird to me that like everybody's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, yo, but if you hate the character that much because of his wrestling style, he's doing something right. Exactly. And I and I, I'm like, bro, like that's me. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I know I'm an acquired taste, but trust me, when you get me somewhere, hey, people are gonna connect. And and in whether it's a five minutes in or 10 minutes in the crowd will connect because I can do that. I'm, I'm able mm -hmm. to pull reactions from people, whether it's the boys in the back, right? Like at outbreak or it's somewhere like, uh, you know, when I use the wrestling open, right? I came, I did a, a 48, 48 second match. Right. Mm -hmm. And in that time, before I, <laughs> before I lost spoiler, uh, the crowd was going red dog, red dog. Like, yo, they was getting behind. So I was like, I know I could connect with fans and it's, it's, it's fun. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's fun. And I, and I know I can do it. And I have a genuine connection with people. Like there's, I go to the wrestling open now. I just put on my mask. I just sit around and just talk to people on the, on the face side and yeah. fans come up and they're like, Hey, what's up, red dog. I'm like, what's going on guys? Like just there. Right. So I, yeah. I get it, but it's, it's one of those things where you kind of, as you're growing your character, you, you want to be able to showcase all the layers of what your character is going through because mm -hmm. You want to take them on a ride too. You want to take fans on a ride because you want to want them to know, like, hey, yo, you go from, you're gonna go from here, you're gonna go up here, and we're gonna take you all the way down to the ground before you start coming slowly back up that roller coaster ride. And I have, I think I have like the story that's able to do that for him. Well, I will certainly be watching when that story comes around because it will sooner rather than later. But and I'm, I'm to the point, and I'm sure you are too, where I'm just I'm. I'm very grateful for the promotions that give me the chance to tell that story. Cause like, yeah, it's one thing to like, you know, bring me in, you know, have me wrestle. And like, like you said, I'll do the, I'll do my thing bell to bell. That's one thing, but to give me the chance to tell, uh, you know, more nuanced and a more lasting story. Uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what most of us, that's what most of us are doing this for. And like, uh, this year in particular, I've been able to do that. Like, in multiple promotions and i'm just i'm so grateful for it um been a lot of luck there, there's learning that comes with that too you know um you, you got to know how to maintain those things and nurture them you know mostly through social media nowadays you can do it yourself you don't have a choice you have to do it yourself you know you can't just rely on the promotion uh but it, it, it's it, and it's work you know <laughs> it, it's work but it's it just so many like a handful like a, the ever the thing that like the stuff that i'm doing on captured lightning where i'm just like this piece of shit champion um the year-long feud that i've been in with the outfielders um the year-long feud that i've been with in, been in with lucas twitch to sangro like they've been drastically different but i've gotten to work on them like all at the same time and like you know you learn from them and clearly people are enjoying them because it's all still going so, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. It keeps you motivated. It's interesting because you mentioned something and I want to ask this question, right? So you're talking about lessons that you're learning and stuff like that. So what's mm -hmm. one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn so far being in the business? Uh, um, yeah, just the idea that uh, <laughs> having, to, isn't, having to sit down and watch yourself isn't the easiest thing for people, especially – let's let's be perfectly honest let's get candid here performers very often have a la level of self-loathing that happens and i'll be perfectly honest there's a lot of that that goes on with me so the idea that you know i started wrestling and then people my trainers were like all right well now you have to watch your match back and like figure out what you did wrong I'm like what no it like i was there i know what happened like it's <laughs> i lived fine. it <laughs> like, no it's not fine like and i didn't start getting like i didn't start getting like better by leaps and bounds until I started watching it. It's still like nails on a chalkboard to me, trust me. But <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was just a very, a very important lesson. Like it's pain. Is it painful? Yes. Sometimes is it cringy? Oh, absolutely. You, you will want to hit yourself in the face for decisions that you made, you know, and you thought it was fine in the moment. And then you see how it comes out on camera and you're like, wow, that was shit. <laughs> but like, you don't have a choice if you're going to do this and do it well you have to watch your things back and um 
you know, just to pick things apart and be honest with yourself because that's another part that that's not easy for people. Be honest with yourself when something sucks and when something is good and when something is good, because I think we know plenty of people that they will only focus on the negatives. Yeah. And, and when you do that, it grinds you down mentally and emotionally. Like you have to, you have to train your mind to be able to pick out the good things and the bad things and just kind of come away with all that and just take all of it with you to the next thing. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great lesson is like, you do have to kind of like, even if you think like you're the best, right? You kind of have to like humble yourself at the door when you Mm -hmm. like, hey man, let me have a conversation with myself about how I did at this point. Oh, I didn't do great. Okay, so what can I do to be Mm -hmm. better? Hmm. And then you have to watch your match back. I know, like, I, I'll be honest, a lot of you guys are going to find this kind of shocking. I don't watch my promos back. Like, I put them together. I Maybe I'll run through them before I, ed- like, hit the finish button on the edit. Mm-hmm. And then I'll send it to my friends and let them critique it. And if they're like, oh, it's good, I'm like, bet. And I just let it go. And I don't watch it back because I'm like, it's already out there. <laughs> like, I don't. So all these promos that I'll be shooting and stuff like that, I'll think of it on the fly. I'll put it together. And then I, I just go with it. And then like, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> but yeah, I have to sit down and really focus on myself when I want to watch my matches back. And it's really, you're right. It's really hard because I'm like, mm, could have hit that spine buster a little cleaner. Oh, oh, well, you know, that spot looked all right. I, it probably doesn't belong there. I probably shouldn't move that. And though I had someone tell me that with one of my move sets and I was like, bruh. And I went back and watched a bunch of my matches. I was like, you know what? I could definitely move that somewhere else. And like now I'm like starting to play with the idea of like, hey, we can have this idea come in, take this idea out and put this in here and there and, and see how the crowd reacts to it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I really like started. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from when it comes to making that decision. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to, it looks different for everyone, depending on your experience as far as like, um, if you have the capacity to fix those things or know how to fix them um because mechanically i mean at your point like at the level that we're at i'm six years in at this point like if i see something and like you know if it was just a move and i think it could be better nine times out of ten i know how to just you know what to work on you know move this around do that different put my left foot a half an inch to the left or something like that i can i can make those adjustments not everybody can do that sometimes you have to go back and you know run it back with your trainer and be like all right what happened here and how do we fix it um we me and you in particular are both lucky in that we are situated in the northeast uh united states where there are so many really really good people who can you know help you out and give you advice and stuff like that be it on shows although that's rare that's kind of the one thing i don't like about modern indie wrestling there's not a lot of uh like really like credible veterans that'll just give you like that aha moment. They are mm-hmm. few and far between anymore, but um, enough seminars going around where um, they, they can really, you know, there's enough people like that will come through that are on TV or were on TV that you got to shell out the cash. But I feel like most of the time, if you know who to go to, you know, you probably, if somebody's accredited, you will know, and those people almost always are willing to share their knowledge and they will drop something on you that will um, make you substantially better. I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. And I, I do love bouncing ideas off of other people and other wrestlers and stuff like that. Like this one time I was asking this dude for some advice. All I can't talk about was number one dojo. I call him just, they kept doing this thing. Don't worry. Ichiban one day. We're going to cross paths. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll uh-huh. talk a little more. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so, hey, man, I want to take this over to one of my favorite segments of the Three Count Podcast. It's called the Three Count Podcast, 10 Count Questions. Here's how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast, right? Oh. Uh, and whatever your answer is, that's your answer. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, let's hope my reaction time is, uh, you know, still up there in my advanced stage. But let's do it. <laughs> So we're going to put on the imaginary timer for added pressure. Oh, God. Bing! And in the words of my favorite commentator, Mike Goldberg, here <laughs> we go. SmackDown or Raw? SmackDown. Favorite actor? 
Um, Killian Murphy. Yes. Uh, TMNT or Rugrats? Oh, Rugrats. <laughs> Favorite movie? Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Let's go. That's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Love that movie. Uh, Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Lord of the Rings. Not even a question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Favorite cartoon? Oh, God. Favorite cartoon? Um, Dragon Ball Z. Let's go. It's a great show. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? Xbox. Mine's right over there. Nice. <laughs> Favorite podcast? Ah, uh, um, the Adventure Zone with the McElroy brothers. I've heard, I've heard great things about that actually. So I might have to have to start checking that out. <laughs> uh, nominate one person you want to see on this podcast. Oh, uh, who do I want to hear talk that I don't constantly hear talk? You know what? We were talking about him before we went on the air, and he's just he's killing it right now. I'd love to hear him speak in long form. Mike Skyros. Yes, 100%. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show. Oh, no. Favorite curse word. <sighs> I'm trying to think of a funny one. It's just, it's, it's just fuck. It's all I say. I grew up in the coal region of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Everybody just says it all the time. Yes. So I'm not it's, interesting. It's it's like water at this point. Like that's just yeah. a word. Like it's it's the greatest word of all time. I don't care what anybody says. There's a whole YouTube video called The History of the F Word. Two minutes and thirty seven seconds. It is amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Liz, those are all my questions, man. Thank you for the conversation. But the last thing I need from you is to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. All right. So on again. Dead name, Twitter and or X, whatever you want to call it. I'm on there at Dylan Mesh. And you can also find me on Instagram at Dylan underscore Mesh. Those are the two places. There you go. He told you where you can find him. He gave you his handles. And then also, you know, you can look him up on YouTube too and find all of his, most of his matches to include with the one, the only, you know, your friendly neighborhood Red Dog. But more importantly, I'm going to take this like our favorite part of a wrestling match home because this is the three count podcast presents now winch ring and i'm your host clifford red dog miller the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling and by now like i said as your sherpa it's never about me it's about who's entering so who's entering you see him right there the man the myth the legend the man all black the one that looks like johnny cash and probably has a better voice than johnny cash dylan mesh and you guys know to do tune in to the next episode and be there or you legitimately follow us on all of our social media platforms. You're subscribed to our YouTube channel. You're following us on Spotify. You're listening to us on Amazon Music because we are there too. You're leaving us five star frost flash reviews. You're buying off all our merch on prowrestlingtees.com or on foryourwear.com. You're even checking out some of the new things that we have plugged out for you guys. Don't worry. It's coming soon. You'll see the little commercial about it. Also, you're telling your friends about us. You're leaving comments. You're telling your enemies about us. You're leaving the likes. You're telling your dog about us. You're sharing our stuff with your parents. And that, or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to end. You're waiting for that outro. And then you're choosing another episode to listen to. <sighs> Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog. The man that beat you up that mountain called wrestling. And what we need from you guys is to kind of show some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast, go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep putting on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count podcast or even find us on foryourwear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, between time, love y'all.